Last night, Pastor Bob was telling me a joke. He said, I didn't get to tell my joke last night. He, you know, he said, so maybe you want to tell it. And I thought, well, let me test it out first. <laughs> so he told him, and I thought, ah, actually not bad. So he's getting better. You know, Google must be helping there somewhere. So I get to, I'm going to share the joke with you because it, it is kind of funny. <sighs> there was this, this man that was um, coming home from work and he realized it was his wife's birthday. So he swung in, swung around, swung into the mall and went into this perfume shop and he asked the lady at the perfume counter, he said, I need a gift for my wife. So she brings out this bottle of perfume, it's like 150 bucks and he's like, something else, need something cheaper. So she goes back, comes back, $100 bottle of perfume, I need something cheaper. Goes back, comes back out, 50 bucks, I need something cheaper. So he goes back, comes back, $25. He said, I said cheap. So she goes and she hands him a mirror. <laughs> right? It's given it up for him. It was his joke. I won't take any credit. That was good though, right? So men, do not buy your wife a bottle of $20 perfume. If you're going to get her perfume, get her some good stuff, right? Yeah, I know, right? But it was. He, he told me the joke. So I was like, hey, that's really, really cool. So we, did, we had a really, really great time in Oklahoma. It's always fun to go there and see Ginger and Merle. Some of you may not know them, but they're, uh, they were here for seven or eight years, and they moved back down there to be next to family, and they, they do a cell group there, and they're doing a really, really great job. And so we had an opportunity to just uh, minister to their people there. And while we were, Bob shared this last night um, in the park, but it, it's really just, it's cool to see how God works, right? So I was doing a women's thing. Peggy is, lives in Tulsa, so she's like an hour and 20 minutes or 40 minutes from Blackwell. So her and Ben came. And it's interesting because they came to a women's event. Ben. I'm like, Ben, you're not a woman. But he just wanted to hang out with Pastor Bob. He's like, do you think that I can hang out with Pastor Bob? Isn't that cute? He's 16 years old and wants to hang out with Pastor Bob. So... Anyways, so Bob takes Ben. I mean, no, that's good. It's good to hang out with Pastor Bob. We all like to hang out with Pastor Bob. Anyways. So Bob takes Ben, and they just go, and they do the thing that, that, that they do. And they come to, to Walmart, and um, there was a young man at, at a table, and he was selling some things. I don't know what it was for, but selling some things. It must have been for charity or something. And so Bob hands Ben $10, and he says, okay, go buy some stuff and witness to the guy. And so Ben said, before he went, he said, okay, Holy Spirit, what is it that you want me to tell this young man? So he heard broken families. And so Ben goes and he buys the things and he starts sharing with the young man his testimony of how he was really angry at God and how he felt like God had forgotten him and how God had let him down and just shared his testimony. He said, then he, when he realized that, what he was thinking about God was not real, that God really was good and, and all these. The young man started weeping and weeping and weeping. And so he's like, that's me. And then he says, you know, and he says, the Lord spoke to me about you and said, broken families. And he was weeping and he said, that's me. My brother just died and, and you know, whatever. So, so Ben is telling this story at Ginger's house. Okay, you guys tracking with me? So we're sitting there and I'm sitting across from Ginger's mom and Ben's telling the story and the mom's sitting there and she said, that's my grandson. And she said, what was his name? And Ben says, well, his name was Blaine. And she goes, that's, she starts weeping. She goes, that's my grandson. So Ben leads Ginger's nephew, her mom's, grand, her mom's grandson, to the Lord who they've been praying for. You guys hear? Ginger, so Ginger and the family went through a really hard thing because their nephew was found dead alongside of the road. Really a tragic, tragic death. He was 33 years old and this was the brother that passed away of the, the young man that Benjamin went up to at Walmart, shared his testimony 
asked him, do you want to give your heart to Jesus? He said, I do. He prayed for him. He got born again. Ginger's, Ginger's mom. You guys checking with me? You can't make this stuff up. So listen, it is sometimes it's uncomfortable. Well, not sometime. All the time it's uncomfortable to just walk up to somebody and start talking to them. But I want to challenge you. When you walk into Walmart, when you, listen, you carry the kingdom of heaven in you, right? So that means that you are a bank from heaven full of resources, like full of money per se, wealth, let's say wealth, full of wealth. So wherever you go, you carry the wealth of the kingdom. And so before you walk into Marketplace or Walmart or TJ Maxx or wherever you're going to walk into, say, Holy Spirit, is there someone here that needs to know about you. That's it. And then just walk in and see what happens, right? That's what Ben and those guys were doing. So it was really, it was really fun. It was fun to see Ginger's mom and Ginger was weeping because they'd been praying for this young man. And here it takes Ben from Tulsa, Oklahoma to come to a women's event. That is not a, he couldn't come to the women's event. So he went with Pastor Bob and they just tooled around Blackwell and they got people saved. It's so, so cool. So I, I just, I just, let's just pray. Lord, I just thank you for this time with, uh, with the people, God. And I just ask that you would just guide my words. Let my words be your words, God. And um, prepare the hearts of the people in Jesus' name. And the body says, amen. 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 I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the heart. Um, why is it important that we guard our heart? Right? We hear, we hear things like this all the time. But it really is really important that we guard our heart. It actually, in this season right now, it's imperative that the body puts a guard around their heart. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. Anybody ever watch Hawaii Five-O? Yes. Oh, the old Hawaii Five-O? Well, this is the, I like the old better, but I was watching the new, this was a few years ago. I was watching the new Hawaii Five-O and it was, it was, they're all, I love those kind of shows. But anyways, um, I forget the guy's names, the, dark hair and the blonde hair, tall and short. But anyways, they're after this assassin and they, f they find him in the hospital. So they're at the hospital and they're interrogating this guy because he's an assassin for um, a mobster gang, you know, so he kills people for a living. So the reason he was in the hospital was because a, a year or so prior, he had a heart attack and he had had a heart transplant. So he had ended up back in the hospital because he was having some issues. So they were grilling him about the people that he killed, right? But what had happened after he had his heart transplant is that he couldn't kill anymore. So what he did is he took the money from the past that he had killed people. He took that money and he bought an island. Tracking with me? He bought an island. So instead of killing the people that he was paid to kill, he took them and he put them on an island and provided for them because he knew the mob would kill him if he didn't do something, right? And I'm sitting there watching this and I thought, that's what happens when you get a new heart. You see things differently. He couldn't do the things he did before because he, he was given a heart from another person planted in him. So instead of a heart of stone, he had a heart of flesh. Isn't that beautiful? That's what happens to us. When we become born again, we can't do the things that we used to do. Isn't that beautiful? So it's really, really important. We need a heart that is pliable and a heart that is guarded, right? And those, when we have that, we'll behave differently. Don't you think? I 100% believe that. Say perspective shift. We can become very unaware of the things that come into our heart. If we're not intentional and diligent of watching what comes into our heart, we're going to miss it. We're going to miss those. See, the enemy doesn't come in. He comes in like these little teeny things, right? Right? A little lie maybe that we start believing. A little offense here and there. It's never usually a big offense. If it's a big offense, it's because there's a little offense somewhere lingering around, right? No, two reasons why. The Bible says that from the abundance of the heart, no, no, sorry, that from our heart flows the issues of life, right? 
And the second thing is, is the Bible says that our heart is the soil, right? It's the soil that the seed is sown. So it's important, right? That their heart is pliable, right? And who guards our heart? Who, gu who guards my heart? Me. me. Who guards your heart? Me. Say me. me. Everybody say me. 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 Say it again. Me, 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 me. Say it again. Me, 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 me. Okay. Just want to make sure you're all awake. It's interesting because my mom had open heart surgery, I don't know, three or four years ago. And she, had, she just went in for a checkup to make sure that everything was functioning well. So she goes into the heart doctor. The heart doctor checks her all out, checks out all her functions. And he's like, your heart is functioning amazing. See, we also have a heart doctor and his name is Dr. Holy Spirit. And Dr. Holy Spirit needs you to come to him and say, I need a heart checkup. Can you tell me, is my heart functioning correctly? Anybody ever get in a funk? You ever get like frustrated and irritated and you're like, what in the world? It's because we got to go to Dr. Holy Spirit and say, I need a heart checkup. My heart isn't functioning correctly because it's out. When I function in that capacity, that's not God, yeah. right? My heart is out of whack. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you agree? So we need Dr. Holy Spirit to put his little steth stethoscope, stethoscope, right? That thing in the ear and say, you know what? There's a little offense hiding way back in there. There's something that came in. Maybe you were frustrated at work or maybe there's a little bitterness that hasn't been t tended to. And that little teeny thing is starting to grow and starting to affect your behavior, starting to affect the way that you see things. Everybody, yes, smile, say cheese. Yes, that's so good. I got to watch myself because you ever see yourself sometime? Like just sitting out in the audience, we should give everybody mirrors, right? Because it's just like, I really look like that. No, I'm kidding. Our heart is the center of our being and from it flows the issues of life. Don't you think if the Bible says that right here, my heart is where life issues flow, you would want to take care of it, right? I love the scripture in Proverbs 4.23. It says to guard your heart above all else because it determines the course of your life. That is a powerful scripture. That word guard there is, it's to protect and to value your mind, your will, and your emotions. When it's referring to the heart, it's talking about your mind, your will, and your emotions, kind of like your soul. That is what it's talking about. It says to value your mind enough. A lot of us don't value our mind. You know why? Because we don't care what we're thinking about. We just think all of these crazy thoughts. We think all of these negative things and we think it doesn't matter. I need to value, say, I need to value my mind enough to think about what I'm thinking about. What am I thinking about? If I get in a funk, a lot of times it's like, what have I been thinking about? I'm like, what I've been, I have been meditating on something that is not God. So I need to change the way that I think, right? Heart check and say, no, nope, I need to change my thoughts. I take my thoughts captive. It says in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, I put it at the feet of Christ and I say, God, give me your thoughts and your heart on this situation. Sometimes our situations become bigger because that's all we focus on. If you focus on God, your God will become bigger in your circumstances. Is that truth? That is true. Jesus really looked at the condition of the heart pretty seriously. In Matthew 5, he says this. He says, if you have anger in your heart or hatred in your heart, it's like murder. He looks at you as a murderer. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. He says, if you lust upon a woman or a man, if you just even look at them and want them, you've committed adultery. That's the condition of the heart. He says to the Pharisees, he says, you're so worried about cleaning up the outside, the inside is filthy. Jesus doesn't care about how you look. He cares about your insides. He cares about your heart. Bobby Connor says this all the time. The matter of the heart is the heart of the matter. My mind, my will, and my emotions, it leads me and guides me. It directs me. Yeah. Amen? 
So value and protect your mind, will, and emotions. You know that your emotions are not your dictator, but your indicators. It doesn't say in Psalm 103, it doesn't say, bless the Lord when you feel like it, oh my soul and all that is within me. It doesn't say praise the Lord when you feel like it and you're in a good mood. No, it says bless the Lord, oh my soul. It's telling you this, even though you don't feel like it, do it. My emotions do not tell me how I'm going to praise. My emotions don't tell me if I'm going to get up in the morning and go to church. I don't feel like it. I'm tired. I think I'm just going to sleep in today. Well, I don't want to go to church because it's really a nice day. I have those thoughts, (laughs) especially in our summers. It's like, Lord, please. Right? Forgiveness is the key to a soft and pliable and teachable heart. Forgive everyone, everything, every time. Say that with me. Forgive everyone, everything, every time. And you're like, but they don't deserve it. It doesn't matter. It's not about their deserving it. It's about you living free. I guess Pastor Mike preached a pretty amazing message last week on forgiveness. Forgiveness is the key to a life of freedom. It's not an option. It's not an option. I don't care. I... I don't care what people do to you. Forgive them. Amen. Everything, every, everyone, everything, every time. Every time to live free. Amen. That is going to keep your heart in check with God. Psalm 1914 says this. This is one of my favorite Psalms. It says, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you. Doesn't say pleasing to the people. That the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, Lord, if what am I meditating on or overthinking? Right. This is people overthink. How many is an overthinker? You're just a meditator. <laughs> it's scriptural. So you guys can just be ease. It's just what are you overthinking is the problem, yeah. right? Overthink the word of God in your life, right? Overthink, meditate on what he says. When I, what I meditate on, I'm going to speak. If you want to know if when you hang around somebody that's negative all the time, what do you think they're thinking about? Negative things, right? Focus on our words and thoughts on things that please the Lord. It is, listen, it is a supernatural power of the Holy Spirit that enables you to make those radical changes. The way that you speak, the way that you think, it's the Holy, where does the Holy Spirit live? The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives and dwells inside of you. Therefore, he gives you the strength and the power to be able to think differently. He does. When I hear this, well, I can't help the way I think. Lie. If the spirit lives in you, you can't help the way you think. It just takes work. Say work. Work. Say it again. Work. Work. Some of us don't like to work at our thoughts. It takes work. You guys get quiet when I talk about work. (laughs) I don't like it. How many, you know, I, I, I do this. It's like, okay, I got, I got to lose like 12 pounds. I got to lose like 12 pounds. I can meditate on it. I can think about it. I can declare it. I can speak it in the name of Jesus. You're going to lose 12 pounds and you're going to just wake up in the morning and it's just going to happen. Anybody in here ever do that? I do. I know it sounds weird, but I do. It doesn't work. I actually have to get up. I actually have to eat differently. I can't have that third piece of cake. I can't have the fifth pizza pizza. Seriously, like I can't. And I have to like walk. I have to do something exercise if I want to, right? Yeah, that's right. So it's changing our perspective, shifting our perspective on things. Changing the way that you think. Amen? Actually have to do something. If I focus and meditate on the things that are not right, then if I focus on a person's weakness, anybody ever do this? You have, you're irritated with somebody and you start focusing on, it's probably husband and wives do this sometime. You focus on their weakness, like they didn't take the garbage out. 
again? Or, you know, anybody or is it just me? <laughs> Women, help me here. Don't throw me under the bus. <laughs> right? But the more that I meditated on, on it, the more I meditate on what he doesn't do, I don't see what he actually does. Right? What they, the good things outweigh the bad, but what I meditate on, I give power to. Right? I think more marriages would actually work if each person would just start finding the good and focusing on the good. Yeah, it outweighs it, guaranteed. Right? Paul even tells us in Philippians 4, 8 through 9, he says, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true. Say true. true. Most of us, when we have issues with people, it's because we believe something that we think is truth. I want to encourage you guys. If you want, if a relationship in your life matters and you're having an issue, sit down with them and ask them what the truth is. This is what I'm thinking and I'm believing. Is this the truth? Nine times out of 10, it's not. Right? We broken relationships come because we believe things that we think are truth or we make them our truth, and they're simply not true. It's our perception or perspective of somebody else's behavior. Do you, I mean, I don't want people to believe a lie about me, although they do, but if they'd come to me and ask, they would realize it's a lie, right? Think on things that are true and honorable. <sighs> and right and pure, and lovely, and admirable. Yes. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Listen, we can, we can look at our nation and we can focus on the mess that it's in. Come back from another, go visit another country and then come back to America and change the way that you look at America. We are still one of the best nations in the world, right? So let's focus on those things in this season, people. Please. Do you know that in Jeremiah 29, it says this. It says that if you want to prosper, then pray for your leaders. They're actually in captivity at this time. And Jeremiah comes to them and he says, if you want to see success and prosperity, pray for the ones who put you in captivity. It is a good point. If we want to see our nation change, we've got to pray differently. Yes. Amen? Amen? All right. And then Paul says this, keep putting into practice. That's where we miss it. Keep putting into practice. Keep thinking about things that are true. Keep thinking about, it's just like, oh, doesn't work. Doesn't work. I'm just going to just let my mind just do its thing. No, keep thinking on things that are true. Keep thinking on things that are right. If I start getting negative, nope. Keep thinking on things that are true. What is true? God, you're good. I don't understand it, but God, you're good. What is honorable? God is honorable. Right? Think on his word. His word is truth. His word keeps us going. His word is alive. His word cuts us. His word corrects us. His word keeps us in alignment. Amen? Keep putting into practice. I love that. We have to be intentional to guard our heart. What are we watching? What are you allowing yourself to indulge in through the eye gate? Maybe we shouldn't watch the news in this season. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not, I mean, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm like really being serious because you have to guard your heart. Guard my mind, will, and emotions to, to put it, to put it, that word guard means it's a military term. It's like, I always think of the, of the soldier at the, un, at the tomb of the unknown soldier. You ever, you ever been to Washington DC and watched that guy? He had, and in fact, they, they can't just be a soldier. They actually have to like pass all these different tests and they have to like be like almost perfect. You can't drink, you can't swear, you can't, I mean, you can't do like anything. 
and you have to be dressed perfect and they walk 365 days a year, 24 seven, and they guard this tomb of somebody they don't even know. And they walk and they're perfect. You ever watch it? You guys should just look it up on YouTube. It is, it is like sombering when you, when you're there in person and they just march back and forth, back and forth. That is what you need to look at your heart as that you set before it, that nothing, nothing, no one is going to come in through my ears or through my eyes. That is not truth. Amen. And if it affects my heart, if what I'm watching and hearing is making me like the world or acting like the world, God, I'm going to think on what is true. I'm going to think on what is lovely. I'm going to think on what is honorable. Amen. In Matthew 13, I'll have Amy come to the piano. In Matthew 13, you guys can read it. It's the sower and the seed. It's one of my favorite parables in the Bible. There's a lot of parables, but this is really good because it talks about the condition of our heart. From the New Living Translation, it depends on what translation you're reading, but in the New Living, the four conditions of the heart or the, or the, uh, the soil is the footpath, the shallow, thorns, and good. Okay? So the footpath... It's those that hear, but don't understand. That's interesting to me because to understand something, because I do this, it's like, oh, I don't understand that. And you just, right? Anybody do that? It's like, I, I don't understand. I just, I don't have the mental capacity to try to understand, right? But that, when we, when we hear the word and we don't understand it, sometimes it's like I understand that I'm not gonna understand, but I understand that God is good and that he'll bring a revelation to me when I need it. Amen? Here's an example. We had our refrigerator. God bless you. (laughs) It's okay. The refrigerator, our uh, ice maker quit working. And uh, I know, I I almost went and bought a countertop one because I like ice that much. So I'm like, honey, the ice maker's not working. He's like, oh, okay. You know, he kind of looked at it and he's like looking at it and, you know, (laughs) looks at it, opens, he looks, you know, it's like, I don't understand. It's not working. I don't understand. I'm like, I don't understand either. It's not working. It should be working. It's a new fridge. I mean, it's like two years old. Hello. It should be working. So he does the thing. So then he sits down and goes, I don't understand it. So just forget it. That's not my husband. He will figure it out. Doesn't understand it, but he's going to figure it out. Right? So he goes on YouTube, YouTubes it does all the things he's got his he's like MacGyver you know he's got all these tools and his lights and he's like looking at all these things and all the whatever's you know and nothing and I think you went on a trip you went somewhere I can't remember what happened but I don't know it was like three days later I'm I got up early it's like you know how many women like get up like at three in the morning and can't sleep anymore that was one of those nights so I was in my living room on the couch and all of a sudden it's really quiet and all of a sudden I hear like my ice maker's working it's a miracle but I think what it was is the filter needed to be changed can you believe that so if you don't change the filter your ice maker don't work yeah just a heads up but anyways he didn't he didn't just say I don't understand and walk away when we don't understand it's the great thing about groups is that we take the word, we sit down and we talk about it to the point that we can understand it. One of my favorite things is when I hear somebody, a woman that goes, this is what God spoke to me about this scripture. It's like, I never saw it that way. A whole different understanding of the word. But when, when we don't do that, the enemy comes and he steals the word, right? The second thing is a shallow. This, this particular heart condition, it, we receive the word with joy, but the word doesn't take root. So when trials and persecution come, right? When trials and persecution come, they will come. Anybody in here ever persecuted? Any trials? Actually, in Matthew 5, it says, Jesus says this. He says, you, when you are persecuted... And when you, when lies are told about you, you should rejoice because there is a reward waiting for you in heaven. Read it, Matthew 5. I just read it this morning. I'm like, oh, I like that. 
I might not see the reward here, but in heaven, I'm going to have a really big room full of really cool things, I'm sure. Right? An ice maker, my own. I'm actually... I, you know, anybody ever go to Sonic? You know what a Sonic is? The, you can get an ice maker with Sonic ice, and I'm looking at one. It's in my Amazon cart. I haven't told my husband about it. He's like, we don't need an ice maker. But with Sonic ice, they're little nuggets, and they're soft. They're the best. It's Quick trip. Oh, they have soft ice? Oh, okay. Well, there you go but I want my own. Sorry. Anyways, <laughs> rabbit. <laughs> but the word didn't take root when trials and persecution come. Listen, we're talking about the shallow heart, the condition of the heart. When things, I receive the word with joy, when things come at me and things don't happen the way that I think they should, it says this, it says, they only endure for a little while. And the New King James, it says, and then they stumble. That word stumble means offended. So this condition of the heart, hears the word of God, gets excited about the word of God, but it doesn't take root. So when anything comes at them, they get offended. And then the word of God can bear no fruit because I walk around offended. The thorns, we receive the word, but, but we allow life's busyness and distraction to pull us away from the Word. Anybody in here relate to any of those? Which is why we need to put a guard at our heart. So these things, so my heart stays good. So my heart stays pliable. You guys tracking with me? Because this is a season where we need the Word of God to take root in our life so that we can actually live from the Word of God. Amen? Because that's part of our identity. What is your identity? Remember where you're from? Where are you from? Not Barron County, not Eau Claire County. You are from heaven. Your DNA is heaven. It says that you're seated in heavenly places. That's when you take your last breath here. Remember, your passport expires and you go where you came from. Heaven, right? which is why we got to guard our heart. So when things come at us, we're like, okay, wait a minute. No, nope. I know who he is and I know who I am. Amen? Amen. A couple of scriptures for you guys. You can jot these down. Psalm 91, one. How many know this one? Psalm 91. How many love Psalm 91? Oh. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. I love it in the Amplified. It says, shall remain stable. How do you remain stable? In the secret place. How do you remain stable? In the secret place. Amen? And fixed under the shadow of the Almighty. That's how we keep our heart pliable and teachable. He that dwells, that means lives, abides, that's where we go to. I always look at it as an umbilical cord, maybe because I'm a woman. But you know, when a woman is pregnant with the baby, his, 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 how many love all the babies? <laughs> There's so many and they're all so cute. They're just so cute. Anyways, that little baby in the belly, God, the source supply, you know, the mommy doesn't feed it like they do the birds, you know? It's like there's an umbilical cord from, from the mom's into the baby's navel and it, it's a source supply. And that's how I envision dwelling with God. It's like he is my umbilical cord, like he's my source. Not Facebook, not CNN, or even Fox News. No, my source, where does my help come from? Right here. This, listen, this is where your help comes from. Amen? If you got to walk around with it on your head, like that for a minute, right? This is where your source is. This is where your help comes from. Psalm 27, 4. One thing I have asked of the Lord and that I will seek 
that I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. That's got to be our heart's cry, that we dwell in Him, in His presence. Amen? How many love being in the presence of God? The things that we haven't seen yet are the things that we're going to see. It's interesting because when we were in Tulsa, we were in the house of prayer. Oh, no. How, tow, what's that thing called? Tower. That thing. The prayer tower. Anybody been at ORU? If you haven't, you should go to Tulsa just to see it. It's amazing. Anyways, we're like, we're going to go to the prayer tower. So we swoop in there. It's 4.55. And this sweet little gal behind the counter, we're like, can we go up to the prayer tower? She's like, you have five minutes. Yes, you can. We're like, okay, we're going to hurry. So we get up in the elevator and we get up, we walk off. There's two ladies. Did you share this last night? Okay. He said, yeah, he didn't. Not this one? Okay, you guys are all liars because he said he didn't. Okay, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> so he gets, he gets all, we get off the elevator, the four of us. There's, there's uh, Peggy and Ben and Bob and I. We walk off the elevator. There's two <laughs> really cool ladies sitting there. And so we walk around, you know, it's a tower. So you walk around and so we, five minutes. So we're walking around and looking at all the things and we really fast. And then we walk around and Bob looks at these, looks at this lady, says, hey, I walked off the elevator and the Lord spoke to me and said, don't leave without having you prophesy over us. She's a Southern lady. You know how Southern people do? She's, she's doing all the things and she's like, ho, ho, you know, all those things. And she says, that's why I couldn't leave. It was like 30 minutes. She's like, I was trying to leave, but she's like, the Lord wouldn't let me leave. So she's just, a, I, I'm like, I'm like trying to hold her up, you know, but I'm not kidding you. Something fell. It was literally like lightning and my whole body was like sweating and it was not a hot flash. I know the difference. <laughs> so we're standing there and she's just prophesying. And the first thing she says is, build the building. <laughs> right? We're like, you know, who are you? And she just starts prophesying things about our ministry, things about what God's going to do. And it's every single thing that God has already prophesied way back here, probably 15 years ago. And we're just like, oh, we're just doing the thing with her. I'm like, give me a hanky. I need a hanky. <laughs> Crazy. So it's now 530. And we're like, we're going to get in trouble. We got to go because that lady said we only had five minutes. So we all get off the elevator, you know, and we're like, and we're like, we're, ma'am, we're so sorry. And she's like, oh, that's okay. Looks like y'all got touched by God. <laughs> I want to live in the South again. Yeah. Like, dang, man, that was good. We go there just to walk around and the Holy Spirit comes and falls and we're just holding this chick up, you know, so she doesn't. And she's like, I think I'm supposed to come preach at y'all's church. <laughs> I'm like, maybe you should. <laughs> so who knows? Maybe. And then Peggy introduces us to this, this kid. His name's Caleb. He's 29 years old, and he's over the Tulsa House of Prayer. And he's a Jamaican kid, and he just is like, I'm like, I wish I was like that when I was 29. You know what I'm talking about? And so we're, we're, we had supper together, and we're just, and, and Bob's like, hey, will you pray over us, you know? And, and he's like, sure. And so he's just, just doing his thing, and he starts praying over us. And I don't know if you guys, if you guys remember a couple weeks ago when I preached on a Saturday, one of the things I said in the beginning is I felt like the Lord, my heart's cry is that I can see Jesus rightly. If you didn't hear, then you, whatever. But that's what I said. When I preach, that's my heart. That's what I've been seeking after is I want to see Jesus rightly. Not the Jesus that we've made him to be, but him rightly. And so we're standing there and there's this Caleb and his beautiful wife. She's pregnant all the kids she's pregnant it's time to have babies but anyway so she's standing there and there we're just waiting you know and and he starts the very first thing he says is this he says Shar, I'm going to start with you he says I feel like you're in a season that Jesus is going to show himself rightly to you <laughs> you can't make this stuff up 
He's intentional. He's an intentional God, which is why I'm like, Lord, I put a, I put a wall, not a wall to keep people out or keep people whatever, but a wall of protection around my heart that nothing can come in that is not supposed to come in. That because I want that soil for all these words that were spoken to come in and be able to take root. I don't have any place in my heart for offense. And I have, I have lots of opportunity to get offended. And I choose every single day. I want no part of it because I want what he has spoken to come in here. And I want this to be the place where it's good soil so the root can go down deep. And so when persecution and things come, I'm not moved because I have prepared this here. My soil is good. My dirt is good. Come whatever comes. I don't care what comes, but I'm going to keep it. Right? So you guys just get ready. I'm just saying that everything has been repeated again all the way in Tulsa, Oklahoma, that we can be in a place that not a single person knows us, don't even know what, not a, not a, not a. It's my Spanish and English together. Right, honey? And words are spoken from complete strangers speaking almost word for word what has already been spoken. <laughs> Sometimes that Southern comes out of me when I'm in the South a little bit, you know? Shabbat <laughs> Kaiba. Here's another scripture for you. Some are just... Sorry. I'm getting... Nice hair, Sim. Simeon? You're going to do great things for God. If you yield your yes, things don't always look like they, you think they should, but that's where you trust God. Go back to what he spoke to you a long time ago. Go back to that word and don't let it go. Let it take root right here. I'm telling you. And I want to be the first person that you sign when you're famous, doing the thing. John 15, four through six. Write that down. That's another to keep our hearts pliable. Romans 12, two. Listen, this has to be our life model right now. Do not be conformed. Do not be conformed to, the, to this age, to this culture, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Amen. We cannot, listen, we have to guard our heart from the ideals of the world because they come in ever so, I mean, just, they just slide in. Well, we don't want to offend anybody, so don't. Well, maybe we can just, you know, let's just, let's just like maybe do church for 45 minutes because we want people to, you know, let's, you guys see how slowly and how, how just, you guys tracking with me? Put a guard around your heart. Do not give in to what the world says. If it's not in the Word of God, reject or veto or whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> Won't you guys stand up? Psalm 1914, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you. So Lord, I just thank you for these people here this morning, God, and I just ask that you would come and you would reveal anything to us that is maybe hidden in our heart, any offense, any bitterness, anything that maybe slithered its way in that we're not recognizing, but that is keeping our soil not good for it for things to take root and bear fruit god we give you all of these things lord we surrender our heart to you we yield our heart to you god and we choose today to put a guard to value our heart enough to value our heart enough to value our heart to value our mind to value our will to value our emotions enough 
that we're gonna protect it. We're gonna protect it because it's more important to us that your word takes root so we can actually experience it the way we were designed to experience it. So Lord, I thank you for all that you are and all that you will be to us, God, in this season. I ask that you would bless the people, that you would go with them, that you'd meet every single need above and beyond all they can think or imagine. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.